What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Living Electric. We've got a fun episode today. We've got the holidays coming up and uh, saw a tweet last week from uh, Brian Reby talking about kind of basically how uh, how absurd some of the EV claims can be. So I'll just read it verbatim because I thought it was pretty funny. Um, he said, amazing that when you're talking about EVs, everyone seems to live in the Arctic, drive 100, 500 miles a day, and usually towing a maxed out trailer. <laughs> and I think, uh, think both of us can, can attest some of those conversations do that, go that way. Um, yes. yeah. Most people are pretty nice, but some of the claims that people make are pretty ridiculous. So we're going to yeah. dive into that, kind of do some role playing, I guess, of like how to talk to family, especially if you're going to be seeing them over the holidays of you know, some of these claims are going to come up and discussions are coming up, going to come up, especially if you're the fan of the show, you're probably an EV fanatic like both of us are. So <laughs> <laughs> kind of what we've learned over the, over the years, talking to people about EVs. Um, but first, Brandon's got a quick update on the Twinsburg chargers we discussed in the last yes. episode. Yes. So not a major update, but there is some progress. I had a conversation with the economic director of the city of Twinsburg this week and had a very good conversation um, along with um, one of my friends, uh, Michael Benson, who actually works with uh, setting up microgrids in the state of Ohio. So okay. we're not only going to try to revitalize the charging station program, we're also going to try to create a microgrid within the city of Twinsburg to make the city of Twinsburg one more green, more sustainable, and more resilient in terms of wow. their power. So right. um, obviously all this is still very fresh. You know, we're still right. <laughs> having these conversations, but it, it sounds like what they should have done in 2019 or early as they were planning this program, <laughs> they're doing now. So Good. I'm very, very happy to be a part of this. I'm excited That's to awesome. see where it goes. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. yeah, it's tough. It's it's tough till you actually like do something to kind of learn those lessons too. Hindsight's always twenty twenty, right? So. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, and and I mean they they even admitted like a lot of them don't have experience with EVs, which right. is okay. Yeah. You yeah. know, there's there's still a lot of municipalities that still don't have you know any idea or like you know even where to start. So like that's where I feel proud having that opportunity to like walk them through things, get them you know set up, and then they can feel comfortable moving forward. It's uh. It's a cool opportunity. It's something I've dreamt about actually being involved in for like seven years. So ever awesome. since working at Tesla, I wanted to be involved with this. But thank God I finally have the experience to help. <laughs> right. <laughs> and the people to help me. So <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You've got yeah. a network now. So Exactly. Yeah. So I'll keep everybody posted as we go along. I'm sure it's going to be months of updates. But right. <laughs> yeah, I'll keep you all posted. <laughs> awesome. So do you have any specific prompt or discussion topic you want to start with of kind of like oh, things man. you hear around the dinner table when you're you're having, <laughs> having all that holiday <laughs> dinner with your family? Well, okay. So uh, do you remember a few years ago when they had like the Thanksgiving clapbacks on Twitter? I didn't. I, uh, was do that you... like a brand thing where like Wendy's was doing <laughs> that or? Well, so I think Wendy's <laughs> got involved with it, but okay. like it was always like. <laughs> It was it was like all over the place, but I remember I think this was back in like 2016 because I remember laying on my parents' couch just going through Twitter with my brother and reading all like the really sassy clapbacks people were like coming up with like towards their family member. Oh my gosh! <laughs> so so I was thinking maybe we could call this like the EV clapback, but um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but um, so for me personally, you know, my family is relatively small and. A lot of my like distant, oh, I don't want to say distant relatives in the sense of, well, I'm going to say they're distant. I'm not sure how many people <laughs> listen to this, but it's part of my family. But um, I haven't really had like a big Thanksgiving dinner in the last time, or Thanksgiving or like, you know, holiday dinner. Last time was probably 2018, like okay. 2017, 2018. Yeah. So, yeah. But I mean, I've had experience with just people with like misconceptions, extreme expectations when it comes to EVs. But yeah. So it's up to you if you want to start this. It seems like you have a bigger family than I do. So, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, yes and no. I think like generally, it kind of started with just like my own close family, like <laughs> kind of their yeah. their skepticism, which I think was was honest and and good skepticism from a lot of people. Is like the number one question, at least what I bought was buying my car. Is like, well, where are you going to charge it? So, mm. like, yeah. What yeah. is uh, my response at the time was, hey, like my work has free charging. That's that's my main way I'm planning on charging my car, which I mean, 
at the time it was great because I'd drive to work. I'd plug my car in there. It was free. It was <laughs> easy to use. I didn't have to pay for anything. Um, and my car was charged up basically all week. So, I mean, pretty easy answer on my end. Um, but then, of course, you know, the, the road trip questions come. So I think after that, it was, <clears throat> you know, that was part of the reason I bought my Tesla versus any other EV at the time because I was I bought it in 2019 where the network wasn't anywhere close to where where it's at now with kind of these other networks and and Tesla had kind of built that out so that was usually my response as well so yeah yeah is that you got that usually number one for <laughs> when, <Yeah. laughs> at least early days when you're talking about EVs oh for sure yeah you know I now that like you got my gear spinning I remember there was one time in I think this was in spring of 2016. I went up to Toledo with a Model S for some like customer test drives. And that's where the majority of my family, like cousins live. So I remember showing them like the Model S and it, the very first question is, well, where do you charge it? Like, yeah. how long do you charge it? Like how, well, and then another one is how fast is it? Because, right. you know, performance and EVs tend to go hand in hand. Right. But I haven't really, I, I feel like, and I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus here, but <laughs> I, I feel like some of my other family members <laughs> And some of more, like, third cousins might have some more, like, interesting takes, especially since some of them work in the auto industry. And they've worked in the auto industry for, you know, years. So right. they might have a different take. But I don't know. I don't have any personal clapbacks, so I feel like I'm kind of feeling <laughs> here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So now, All my family is pretty supportive of EVs. That's, yeah, which is great. I think I've had a similar kind of journey if you will it's not like much of a <laughs> journey <Yeah>. but um <laughs> from buying my car to now seeing people kind of embracing that and saying oh like i wasn't even thinking about that when you bought your car and now like that i see you're living with it it's easy like you're yeah. still driving it yeah. like they're now getting more interest and they're like oh maybe my next car will be an ev so yeah, yeah. i think a lot of people have kind of gone through that process over the past few years as technology's progressed as just the the market for evs has progressed because there's a lot more options out there now too. <laughs> I oh, don't yeah. think everybody yeah. wanted wanted a Tesla at the time or wanted a Bolt or wanted a, a Leaf. Like there's way more options out there. They're seeing commercials for them. I think that helps a ton as well. <laughs> like people oh, yeah. are seeing, oh yeah, these are actually a thing. It's not just like some vaporware that somebody's talking about. So yeah, I like that. Helps. Yeah, I think I think it definitely helps like sharing your experience and like getting right. people like more comfortable with the idea. Because I actually I have a cousin that lives in Atlanta and um. I believe it's been a while since I've seen her. She's significantly older than me. Um, so she's kind of like a third or fourth cousin. I'm not really sure how that like falls in line. <laughs> but um, family tree here. Yeah, yeah I know, right? Um, I'm Italian, it happens. But like, um, <laughs> but um, essentially, she was getting, you know, like all this exposure from like my experience with EVs through Facebook. And it yeah. actually led her to buy their Bolt. Uh, oh, EV, no way. which they fell in love with and now they're looking for a second ev That's um awesome. so she reached out to me regarding like the id4 and the ionic 5 and like you know getting some thoughts there um so it's it's cool to like see how comfortable people are after they get that almost like uh secondhand exposure right you know, so like how easy it can be too right you know yeah i think we preach this all the time if you are going to like a big family gathering like if you do drive an EV, hopefully you bring it and definitely like show it to people, like let them get their hands on it. If you're comfortable with people driving it, that's a fun thing to do as well. Like that firsthand experience with the actual car helps immensely. Like that really oh, solidifies sure. it for a lot of people to realize, oh, like this does everything my car does. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> just fueled differently. So yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's definitely, definitely something I recommend if you can do this this holiday season <laughs> yes yes if the winter storm allows you to do it definitely get get a chance to get some butts and seats as they say <laughs> that's right that's yeah. right so what are some like i'm trying to think of some big questions that i usually get that are usually secondary because i think charging is usually the first one which i think is a pretty easy answer to get through um i think after that i think a lot of them kind of go to oh well like isn't that just coming from coal or like is it really that much mm. better for the environment so like how would you answer that one <laughs> uh, i i feel like i feel like we should get into like the role playing like do you want me to be like the family <laughs> member i might be able to do the like an old lady like <laughs> <laughs> do, do you have any family nicknames that people have given you i gotta oh. get into character oh gosh <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> family nicknames. I don't know if I want to share them on the on the show. We're gonna get comments with them now. <laughs> okay, well, I'll, I'll just pretend to be uh, the uncle. I'll just be the uncle in this situation. Okay. <laughs> so, so Alex, <laughs> I yeah, I've heard. <laughs> Alex, um, <laughs> I've heard that EVs are worse for the environment. In fact, the majority of them are powered by coal. I've heard lithium mining is horrible for the environment. Can you clarify that for me? Yeah. So <laughs> I don't think, uh, <laughs> I don't know if they would ask, can you clarify that? <laughs> They'd probably be like, what's the deal with that? Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Well, I'm just um, trying not to get like too, you know. <laughs> yeah, don't get don't get mad at me here. Um, no, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think usually my response is, you know, any kind of human activity is going to have some effect on the planet. I think it's ridiculous to say that, like, oh, EVs are a non, like, they're completely zero emissions or completely have no impact on the planet. I don't think that's fair to say. Um, certainly, they're going to have an effect mining. Precious metals has an effect, you know, shipping those materials across the world has an effect, building batteries has an effect, like, all of these things do add up, but the data shows that building an EV and driving it for its lifetime still has significant emissions reductions from doing the same with a gas car. So, yes, it does still have an impact, but I think it's about reducing it where you can, so that's usually my... uh my my takeaway <laughs> or my my response there <laughs> well my response is i'll stop commenting in facebook <laughs> <laughs> right i've learned my lesson <laughs> <laughs> so brandon I'll, I'll, we'll switch yeah. roles here um, oh no yes so i've heard that you know like you might be traveling over the the holidays what if you get stuck in like a winter storm in your car what are you gonna do so are you are you asking like is my battery gonna die like I'm yeah only, like know, aren't I'm you worried about death in my car? yeah aren't you worried about your car like running out of juice in the middle of the highway if you get stuck in traffic or a storm comes no. through or something like that no no and the, and the the reason is is because my electric vehicle utilizes my fuel more efficiently than a gasoline vehicle would yes sitting in a vehicle you know, utilizing the heat, it is going to use, you know, some electricity. But the thing is, if the vehicle is sitting still, it's not utilizing that electricity to move the vehicle. It's going to utilize that to heat the vehicle in terms of the inside. And the cool thing is, is that we have a lot of friends who are content producers who have proven <laughs> that you can sleep in your vehicle in single digit temperatures. We'll circle back to Brian, you know, from the beginning <laughs> right. of the episode. <laughs> And it's proven that your percentage of like state of charge will not drop significantly as if you were sitting in a gas vehicle, just simply burning gasoline. Right. Right. Yes. Yes. But what, so, what if you're like miles from the charger and you're like running on, on really low battery percentage and then you hit traffic and you're stuck there for hours. What about that? Well, <laughs> well okay. So yeah, it, it's similar to if you have a low tank of, you know, like low fuel in terms of right. like your gasoline vehicle. You know, but like, as I mentioned, if you hit traffic and your vehicle is not moving, you're not going to be using a significant amount of electricity. Whereas if your vehicle is running in terms of a combustion vehicle, you're just burning gas. So more than likely, you're still going to run out of gas before you would run out of a charge. But if you get stuck in that situation, it's going to be tough either way. Right. So, yeah, just be mindful. Charge your car in the winter. <laughs> As we have we as we've discussed on previous episodes, a lot of the knocks against EVs are just knocks against cars in general. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like it's hard to avoid some of these. That's what I usually kind of respond with too. Is like, yeah, like think about what you would do in a gas car if your gas car is running on E and you're like miles from a gas station, you get stuck on the highway. Like it's the same thing. Like, yeah, that's not really a knock yeah. against EVs. <laughs> so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's just the situation you have to figure out. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Man, this is this is fun. <laughs> I feel like I'm talking with my hands a lot this episode. Uh, <laughs> hmm. Okay. I'm trying to think of I'm trying to think of a, a thing that I've seen. Okay. So I've heard electric vehicles are super expensive. You know, yeah. from what I've seen, most of them are well over a hundred thousand dollars. How are we as, you know, middle class citizens going to afford more affordable EVs? Are there any options out there? Because I'm pretty sure they're just for the rich. Yeah, it's it's certainly a concern. I think the uh, I think as with a lot of new technology, it starts out, out at a higher price point. So, you know, 
the the evs that have been coming out recently are premium vehicles and that's who they're targeting first because you know some of the people that adopt new technology generally like have the disposable income to buy some of these cars and test things out but we've seen over the past few years we've got a lot of good options that are hitting kind of price parity with their gas counterparts so Yes, you know, five years ago, if you're shopping for an EV, you're probably going to spend $80,000 to get one that was capable and had good range and all that stuff. But nowadays, there's tons of options. So not only on the, the new side of things, if you do want a, a truly capable EV, you could get one relatively affordably for, for a, a middle class person at around the, the $50,000 range, which unfortunately is just as expensive as new gas cars nowadays. Prices on those have continued to go up. So um, there's options at that level, but there's also a lot of used options as well. So if you are looking to, you know, just get a car for commuting or just using around town and just want to kind of try out electric for your commuting purposes, there's lots of good used options at kind of the, the 15 to 20,000 mark as well. So I don't think that's something to discount as well as the, as the market grows, there's going to be even more used options. These things are co going to continue to drop in price. So I don't think it's something to completely throw out just because it's expensive i think it's something you should definitely still look at so hmm. i learned the, I learned the <laughs> lesson <laughs> hmm. and i just want to point out we're not mocking people this is just to, to help if you do get some questions like this right, right. And most of this is from what i've seen on facebook feeds <laughs> <So>. right yep <laughs> yeah so brandon i think uh <clears throat> i think evs are pretty cool um but, you know, if people keep buying EVs, how is the, our, our grid going to catch up? Like, like, can our grid handle all of these cars charging at once? This, I, <laughs> I definitely feel like this is a you <laughs> type of question. <laughs> this is why we're flipping it, because not everybody at the dinner table has my knowledge. So This is, true. Well, this is, this is realistic. I can't take you to every holiday dinner. Um... <laughs> right. Let me call Alex real quick. <laughs> yeah, right. Put him on speaker. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so I'm going to try to channel my inner Alex Sidla <laughs> and get an electrical engineering degree so I can speak about, speak about this properly because I, I'm nervous to answer this because I feel like I'm going to do a decent job at answering this, but you might have to correct me. No, so, <laughs> so the grid can and will handle it. The thing is, is that our electrical grid is getting better every single day. The utilities have put in resiliency to make our grid resilient to any, well, I don't want to say any potential issue because I'm not going to generalize because <laughs> right. there will be issues. You know, the grid is old. We see that like in Texas, for example, you know, there's a lot of different scenarios that can happen. But the thing is, is most EVs are going to be charged overnight when demand on the grid is going to be lower when most, most, most people are sleeping. Versus whereas if everybody charged their vehicle during peak demand times, like throughout the day when people are running, you know, air conditioning, they're, you know, they're um, running their computers if they're working from home, you know, if they're utilizing a lot of electricity versus when people aren't going to be utilizing it, which is off demand or, you know, off peak hours at night. So the thing is, is that electrical usage comes in waves, uh, peaks and valleys, as I believe Alex has mentioned before. <laughs> <laughs> and overall, you know, the thing is, is that as technology improves, so will the grid. You know, the grid will get cleaner if we're going to be talking about the topic of pollution, but also because there's also going to be more energy production sources like, you know, solar, wind, hydro, nuclear, and so forth. The grid is just going to become more, more resilient over time. It's just it's just going to take time right yeah i think yeah. that's the that's the key message i think if you don't want to get into technical stuff is like the the grid is adaptable it's changeable all that stuff like i think that's the key point to nail home typically um especially if yes. you're not as technically inclined or you're talk, not talking to somebody that's an engineer so <laughs> me <laughs> um but yeah i think that's the that is the key thing like I always give the example of gas as well. It's like when the first gas cars came out, there were no gas stations. And like, look at how we have scaled our gas infrastructure to fuel the millions and billions of cars across the planet. Like that did not happen overnight. The same yep. is not going to be true with EVs. Like it's going to take time. Yes, that's just the, the fact of the matter. <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> 
Like, sure, it's, if we all bought EVs tomorrow and all plugged them in at the same time, yeah, things would not work right. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly. like going out and trying to... My only my only sports analogy is, like, imagine, like, you've never played, like, professional basketball and you try to go, like, play in an NBA game. You're not going to do too well. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> same kind of thing. If there's no preparation, then it's not going to go well. <laughs> so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, that that's where, you know, the companies are going to be proactive instead of reactive, where I still feel like some utilities might be reactive, but as you mentioned, yeah. it's just going to get better. Right. So, right. So I have a question for you regarding, uh, <laughs> I'm, my arms are crossed, I'm getting sassy now. Uncle Brandon. What, what happens if there's a power outage? How am I, how are you going to charge your car? Uh, yeah, great question. Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> 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 no, I think uh, I think that's a concern as well. I know we've got some storms rolling in right now in the Midwest, um, and power outages are a thing, right? So, um, fortunately, I I live in an area where power outages are not that common. If they do happen, it's maybe for a couple hours. Um, but the thing I like about having an EV specifically is it is always you know charging in my garage and theoretically it's going to be kind of sitting at a high state of charge already so even if the power does go out my car like i still have gas in the tank if you will the battery still has some, has some juice in it it's not like the power goes out and i'm at 10 percent or whatever yeah. um and that battery lasts a long time so you know obviously i'd probably be at a bit more conservative if i knew i couldn't charge at home but maybe i i drive a little bit and hit a charger where there is power i mean the flexibility of where you can charge your car, I think, is a, a key point as well. I'm not just locked into charging at home where I might not have power. So <laughs> I think that's something <laughs> something to consider as well. Yes. And another, well, this actually could be a clapback. Um, <laughs> and, and I've said this to my neighbor many, many times. Gas pumps don't work without electricity either. So, yeah, you know, if you don't have power, you can't pump your gas. So, yep. yep. There's my clapback. So, yep. And, you know, like the, the end goal really is to get, you know, home batteries and solar. So I'm completely resilient, right? So even if the power goes out, I can still charge my car. Even my house still works, right? So, I mean, we've seen that. You could even point to the, the Ford F-150 commercial where they're showing it power in the house. Like that's that's really kind of the direction we're headed. It might not be here today, but that's that's certainly the, the direction things are headed. I was about to say an uncle joke when you said my house still works. I was going to say, I sure hope it does. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh sorry I'm, I'm channeling this character too well i love it yeah <laughs> so, so is it is it my turn to ask another question yes i do have a question so i hope you don't steal it from me <laughs> <laughs> um okay give me one so i'm actually looking through my youtube comments because that's where i get some really good ones that oh, i like yeah <laughs> pretty ridiculous i just thought oh how about this one. um so aren't you worried about, you know, the the battery dying in a few years? You know, I've got I've got my iPhone. I've only had it a couple of years. It's already like it won't hold a charge as long. Is the same true for EVs? Are you concerned that you're going to be, you know, not have as much range in the future? <laughs> <laughs> I will. So I, I feel like I'm throwing my family under the bus. Because... <laughs> I've got this other fifth cousin. That... <laughs> well, no, this is actually my mom. Love you, mom. But... <laughs> She she still has the same iPhone from like 2017. Like it's going on five years. Wow, and it that's awesome. Barely, it barely hold, uh, it barely holds a charge. <laughs> Sorry, I'm bringing up no, arguments no. on the podcast. <laughs> well, I've told her many times it barely holds a charge, and literally she's always carrying around her power cable with her. So you know, like we keep saying, like let's get you a new phone. She's like, nah, I don't, I don't need one. I don't need one. But. My response to that is that the battery technology in the sense that, yes, in your iPhone, it's a lithium ion battery. In my Tesla or other electric vehicles, it's a lithium based battery as well, or lithium ion, depending on which vehicle you're driving. So the thing is, is that your, your phone's battery isn't as well managed as what's in my electric vehicle. My vehicle, most of the ones on the road, I'm going to answer this lightly, have battery <laughs> management systems that regulate the temperature of the battery, which then extends the life of the battery. 
And now if you're worried about, you know, replacing the battery in about two years, there's plenty of data that has proven that these battery packs can last hundreds of thousands of miles. And in fact, actually some data predicts that it will actually last longer than the rest of my car will. So I'm not at all concerned. Do you have like a, do they provide like a warranty or anything on that? Or is that just kind of data showing that? Uh, yes. So there, there are really good warranties for the battery pack and powertrain. Most of them are going to be about eight to 10 years, depending on the manufacturer and around a hundred thousand miles or more, depending on what comes first. So you shouldn't have to worry. It's pretty good. <laughs> Talk with my hands. <laughs> <laughs> So, speaking of battery packs, I heard they catch on fire a lot. Oh, yeah. I mean, they do sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> that's my that's my my instant way to like de-escalate an argument is be like, "Oh, yeah, I agree. Yeah, they do." <laughs> 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 um, yeah, I mean, I I was actually my my dad sent me an article um, last night, actually, about e-bike batteries, 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 <laughs> batteries specifically, um, just because there's some really shady kind of regulations around e-bike batteries and like these e-mobility devices where like the batteries are just not great sometimes and really dangerous. So, um, yes, like battery fires and car fires are a concern. Um, again, the data is showing that car fires out of gasoline vehicles are much more common, like a higher percentage of those catch fire than electric batteries. Um, and there's also a lot of, you know, safety things in play with electric vehicle batteries as well. So, you know, it's got that ma battery management system you just mentioned um, that has the, uh, that is constantly looking at that monitoring temperature, making sure cells are okay, like all that stuff. So it's going to start throwing errors as soon as anything looks weird. Um, and in that case, you've kind of got a warning before anything goes completely sideways. <clears throat> and, uh, so yes, yeah, so, I mean, it's a concern, but it's, you know, as, as with any battery, I mean, most people, I usually point to people and say, you're, you're holding your phone right now. That's using the same technology as in my car. Do you worry about that catching on fire? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'd say like, for me, sometimes I do. I'm like, I'm going to bed. I'm like, I hope this doesn't catch fire tonight, but <laughs> like yeah. the odds are it won't. Right. So um that's that's kind of what i i hang my head on is like the the data showing that it's not that common and it's really not something you should have to worry about like on a day-to-day -day basis so that was a good answer yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i i think if people realize just how combustible things are around them i think they would be more <laughs> right right yeah. yeah yeah i always i always try to like not to like I hate to say clap back, but it is kind of, it's like, uh, like the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I always point to like, you're probably currently doing something that you didn't even realize was like very similar to what EVs are. So like the lithium ion thing is a clear example. I'm like, your laptop has one, your phone has one, like yep. your watch. Like, yeah. Your watch probably has one. Like, are you worried about those catching on fire all the time? Like it's the same technology in the car. Like, and there's, it's probably even safer in the car because of how many regulations there are around, <laughs> <laughs> around cars. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. generally that's not something you have to worry about. So, yeah, I definitely think that we should do an episode on e-bike batteries because I have read some news stories about that as well. Yeah. I think we should do one on that. Yeah. It's a whole like regulatory disaster with a lot of things like even like i'm sure you've seen even kind of like looking at chargers and stuff is like ul listed stuff sometimes the ul listing only refers to the cable or only refers to the yeah. circuit board <laughs> like it's only yeah. certain pieces not the whole piece of equipment which could, is just really shady in my opinion so oh yeah 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 no I, I agree i've i've ran into that already i'm guilty of posting a review saying this is ul certified without not you know without clarifying the right. details. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> so again, going on the the winter theme, um, I've heard e-bike, or not e-bike, I've heard electric car <laughs> batteries lose a ton of range in the winter. Like, are you worried about getting to your destinations when it's really cold out? Uh, no, no. I mean, so the truth is, is yes, cold temperatures do impact battery range in terms of, you know, if the colder, the worse the range is. But Data has proven, from my personal experience, I've only lost about 20 to 30% range, 
which for my day-to-day -day driving, that's totally fine. I'm not super concerned about that. And I know of ways that I can really, well, I don't want to say relieve that, but like um, <laughs> make it easier for me. You know, I can uh, precondition the vehicle while it's plugged in. It will warm the battery pack up for me. Um, there's things that when I'm out and about as I'm driving, the battery pack will warm up as well. So cold temperatures don't really bother me that much. You got to be prepared in the winter time regardless. Right. Yep. Again, it goes back to gas cars, right? <laughs> I it's mean, a car. They, they, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people don't realize like a lot of these things happen on gas cars too. You just don't really notice it. So mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, <laughs> similar yeah. thing. Hmm. I'm trying to think of something I've seen. Okay. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to give you <laughs> the ultimate question. Okay. 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 So I've been driving an F-250. Ford F-250 for a long time. I don't know why I'm doing a slight southern accent here, but... <laughs> I You have to convince me. Why would I go electric? Give me a good reason. Yeah, so, I mean, first I would ask, why are you driving an F-250 right now? I own a farm. Okay, so that's great. I mean, yeah, I think... Uh, <laughs> I, think uh, I think it really depends on kind of your use case for the vehicle. I think... Anybody, you know, a lot of these kind of like government regulations are out there telling people like, hey, we're not selling any more gas cars. We're not we're not no new new gas sales. But I think the reality is that, you know, there's there's still going to be a place for gas vehicles in some some applications. You know, if you own a farm, you're you're maybe hauling stuff around the farm all day. You might not have. A... <laughs> what are you laughing about? <laughs> are you just envisioning yourself as a <laughs> just because I'm. I was just like, I have a farm. <laughs> Three-word answer. Oh, man. Four-word answer. Uh, so, sorry. I'm trying to good. not to cry over here. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, so so I think, I think gas vehicles are always going to have kind of a place in certain applications. There's some things that EVs just can't do yet um, as vehicles. So, hey, if an F-250 works for your farm and that's that's what's best for you, um, that's, that's okay. I don't think anybody's going to force you to drive an EV. Um, but you know, the technology is improving really well. If you're at your farm and you're just doing, you know, short trips around the farm, an EV might work for you more better than you might think. So, I mean, the new, new F-150 is out. It's got, uh, it's got some really good range, some really good capability. It's built like a normal F-150. It's very familiar if you get in it. Um, and you know, on farms, you're probably doing, you know, lower speed travel around your property. So especially if it's a smaller yeah. farm, lower speed travel is like the dream for EVs. Like <laughs> at low speeds, they are incredibly efficient. Whereas gas vehicles, it's the opposite. When they're idling, when they're going low speed, they waste a lot of extra energy. For EVs, it's great because they can sit there and idle. They can stay on. You can keep the air conditioning running in the summer when it's hot. And it's not wasting a ton of energy. So I think it's something to definitely look at. Again, like, don't want to tell you how to run your farm, but <laughs> but the uh, <laughs> but I think there's other there's options out there for for your your kind of situation. Cool, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> you weren't I'm expecting really sorry, a, guys. a uh, you weren't <laughs> expecting a follow up question. I don't think. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for me, I, from your end. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, to ask, like, yeah, why do you have asked... an F-250? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I, I liked it. I liked it, but I was just like, I've got a farm. <laughs> yeah. I'm really sorry, guys. I'm a bit slap happy right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. It'd be an entertaining episode. Yeah. Well, do you have an ultimate question for me as we wrap up? Oh, um, I'll do a similar one for you. So, um... Let's say I'm a, uh, I'll say I'm like a long haul trucker or something like that. How about that? I, I drive a semi for work. I, I really am not looking forward to EVs. Like I, I think that's going to cut down on our, our, um, our, what's it called? Our output in terms of like shipping, getting things around the country. Like, I think it's just going to slow us down a lot. What do you, what are your thoughts on that? Um, okay. Well, I'm going to start off by asking you a question. So what are, so it sounds like you have a lot of concerns. Have you done any research into like how that could be done? <laughs> Where's your research? 
<laughs> well, uh, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn the question back on on you. You know, okay. I'll, I'll definitely get back to my answer. But I'm just curious. You know, have you looked into anything in terms of you know which electric semi trucks are out there? What are some you know products that could make this easier for you to feel more comfortable? You know, it sounds like you have a lot of concerns. I want to make sure you know that you've had a chance to you know look into things. That way, I can gauge my answer. Yeah, I've looked, and it seems like a lot of the a lot of the products out there now are still kind of in the prototype type phase. So I'm <laughs> so I'm I'm concerned, you know, that some of this data is just from like a couple tests they've done and isn't actually mm-hmm. going to like scale and like be able to used on a wide like across the whole company or across the across the nation. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's a reasonable concern. I mean, you did bring up a good point. A lot of this technology is relatively new, but, you know, there's a lot of manufacturers who have been testing products, you know, be it Tesla, you know, Daimler or Nikola, for example, you know, they're really stress testing their their semi trucks to make sure that they're capable and can handle exactly what you're looking for it to do. Um, you know, for example, for example, Tesla just recently started production of their semi truck that can drive 500 miles with an 82,000 uh, pound payload in the truck bed. Well, not, you know, the, the trailer, not the truck bed. But um, it's it's proving how capable this technology is becoming. And yes, you know, with new technology, it's going to prove whether or not it lasts in terms of like how long they're out on the road. And, you know, obviously more data is going to come back to these companies to improve the product. But as of right now, there's still a decent amount of offerings. And I think it's worth checking them out. You got to you got to find out which one works best for you as well as your company. You got to make sure you're comfortable there. So you mentioned like a full load, like isn't the batteries are pretty heavy, I'd imagine, too. Right. So what about like braking and trying to like slow that vehicle down? Isn't that going to like put a huge strain on the brakes? Oh, yeah. So really good question. And I'm not sure. Have you driven an electric vehicle before? I haven't. No. Okay. Okay. Have you heard of the term regenerative braking? Um, yeah, I think hi- some of the hybrids have those. Is that right? Yes, yes, yes and no. So yes, hybrids <laughs> do have regenerative braking where they will utilize the movement of the tires when you take your foot off the accelerator to, you know, recharge the battery pack slightly. That's essentially how they maintain battery charge. So electric vehicles have regenerative braking as well. And depending on the manufacturer it can be either, you know, kind of like on the weaker side of regen to the stronger side of regen. So for example, you know, the Tesla semi I mentioned earlier has regenerative braking. And what's really cool is Tesla's proven as they go down um, different, you know, like slopes or like, you know, through like different um, mountainous areas, you know, they've, they've been able to actually use the regenerative braking where the motor is taking that energy and feeding it back into the battery pack instead of the physical brakes. So your physical brakes essentially remain cool you know they're not overheating so there's really no need for in terms of like an emergency runoff Mm -hmm. it's going to maintain the physical brake pads a lot better than say a diesel semi truck would very cool nice and the best way actually i want to i want to add something to this and the best way to describe how regenerative braking feels is almost like downshifting in a manual transmission so if you're used to driving a diesel semi truck and you're shifting down the gears as you're going down you know a hill it's going to feel very similar to that, but just a bit smoother since you're not going through different gears. Mm-hmm. Okay. For for context, I have no idea what downshifting in a diesel feels like. So, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> have you have you driven a manual before? I have never driven a manual. No. Ooh. Okay. Well. Well. I mean, I guess this goes against the whole living electric thing. But if we do end up with a gas vehicle that has a manual. I could teach you how to drive one. That'd be awesome. Yeah, my buddy in Dayton has been offering to to teach me for a while. He said we need to do a collab video <laughs> so it's I can a... learn how to EV driver <laughs> learns how to drive manual. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, it's a very good skill to have. I know we're starting to get away from manuals, but in case yeah. of like an emergency, if you have to move a vehicle, you at least right. know how to. Yeah, right. that's at least what my parents always told me. Yeah, I've heard. Yeah. Uh, I've heard that's one of the best security. Uh, security methods on cars now is having a manual yeah. car because <laughs> not a, it knows really how to drive them. It is. <laughs> yeah it really is yeah but so um that was my last qu- or yeah i guess i think that's it on my end i'm trying to think of anything else that might come up um i think we covered a lot of the basics here any kind of like words of advice if you are having uh if you are are meeting yeah. a lot of family or seeing a lot of family 
Yeah. So, okay. So, like, I know this episode, it definitely seemed like we were mocking people and, you know, like, have, we were having fun. But the thing is, is that if people genuinely have these questions, don't mock them. You know, yeah. take take their questions and be respectful with your answers. You know, I don't know everybody's family situations and I'm definitely not, you know, a therapist or anything like that. <laughs> but definitely, you know, just be mindful of how you respond because the way that you respond to people could either be good or that could be bad. You know, it could turn them off forever from electric vehicles just based right. on how you're talking to them. Right. So don't don't downplay their question. Be respectful. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, I'd, I'd echo the same things. I think, like, I'm always on the boat. Like, you never want to make anybody feel stupid. You never, like, there's no dumb questions. Like, this is all new stuff to a lot of people. So if, if people are asking questions, it's because they're curious. It's not because they're trying to, like make you angry or whatever <laughs> or like say yeah. no this is stupid like hopefully they're not going about it that way but yeah um yeah to echo that like this is definitely kind of to to show you how we would respond if we were getting these questions for the first time we've gotten them hundreds of times <laughs> throughout all the yeah. events and, <laughs> and youtube comments and everything we've we've seen over the years so this is just yeah. kind of how we've we've learned to respond to them um and you know like generally like i try to be respectful of everybody's point of view as well like we did the scenario with you know like even the farmer or like the um what was the other one we did oh um, the truck driver yeah we're like hey like i don't want to switch to evs like that's fine like it's it's sometimes it's just not for everybody it's not their thing it's like like trying to convince somebody to switch to like a smartphone if that's not what they want like <laughs> sometimes yeah. it's just not gonna work so yeah, we're not going to convince everybody. I think that's kind of the <laughs> the point. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And one and one point I want to drive home too is that we were role playing. So I just hope nobody thought that we were making fun of anybody because definitely. that's definitely not the point of today's episode. Right. You know, we just want to have fun and uh, educate as many people as we can. So if you guys have any questions, you know, regarding how EVs operate or how you might want to respond to like you know family members if they have questions, let us know. You know, we're more than happy to help. Right. And this episode should be coming out on, what, the 26th, so day after yep, so, Christmas, so, yep. you know, peak family season for uh, <laughs> for us in the U.S. and for those that celebrate <laughs> Christmas. Um, peak family season. Peak, <laughs> peak uh, yeah, family event season. <laughs> um, but yeah, if as always, like, we'll pass it back to you. If you have discussions with family members over the holidays, we'd love to hear about those, kind of how those interaction goes. Maybe a question we didn't cover today that you want to hear what our response to is. Um, definitely let us know. So, yeah. And have fun. And stay safe. Have a happy <laughs> holiday season. <laughs> definitely. Cool. We'll talk to you all in the next episode.